Well, I'm going to engage in uh, a couple of uh, conversations, uh, Hollywood conversations, which is why I'm wearing these glasses. And also, Thomas requested that I keep them on, so I'm going to make he's, he's him got, happy. Yeah. Um, and before I get to you, just sort of generally, I want to sort of, you know, kind of lay the foundation of this, these two conversations we're going to have with some of the leading lights of uh, Hollywood, including Thomas. Um, and that is that, um, you know, Hollywood and entertainment have had a long-standing and dynamic relationship with technology. If you think about it, you know, go back to the printing press and Gutenberg and exhibitors and film and, um, you know, TV and radio. Um, obviously, you know, things change. And, of course, none of the older technologies go away. They all get stacked up. And, of course, what's going on now, not only are media and content people trying to understand how to create content for the web, of course, but also how to integrate the content with the distribution for all of the legacy pieces of the uh, distribution as well, which is to say print and film and TV and radio. So that's sort of the foundation of this conversation. And as Tim said, Thomas um, uh, Tall is the CEO of Legendary Pictures, which you may not have heard of, but I know you've heard of uh, many, many of his movies, which include Dark Knight, Inception, The 300, and uh, The Hangover. And you know, before we begin, I, I think an extra round of applause for anyone who had anything to do with The Hangover. Can you join me, please? I mean, holy smoke, right? Because that was just, just a fine, fine motion picture. I don't care how that thing was distributed. I enjoyed the hell out of that thing. OK, so thank you very much for bringing that to us. Now, you know, we're talking about uh, innovation here. Um, and so we want to kind of bring it back to that theme a little bit. And one thing that's kind of interesting, I think, about your story, Thomas, is your story. And, you know, there's so many people in the world and in America who would like to do what you have done, which is to say, you know, you know he, here's a kid from upstate New York, from modest circumstances, Hamilton College, he goes to Hollywood, and all of a sudden, you know, you're in the movie business. And you know, I guess to me, what I'd like to understand is what is the innovation part of that? Because you had to have done something different from other people to succeed. And now you've got, what, a 40-picture deal with Warner Brothers. And how did, how did that happen? What's the innovation part? Um, you know, I mean, part of it was, uh, I was actually at a dinner party, I think, in 2003. And the then vice chairman of MGM was sitting next to me at this and was talking about all the problems in the, uh, in the movie business. And I had both an entertainment as well as a private equity background. And, you know, I'm sure I started pontificating about how you could build a new system that was private equity backed because they had raised all this money. Um, and he sort of said to me, well, if you're so smart, you should do that. And so um, I, you know, I wrote a plan. I talked to a couple of the studios. And uh, you know, I was very fortunate to, because uh, our, our success starts and ends with Warner Brothers. They're a fantastic partner, best studio in the world. Um, we were able to raise a, a very large amount of capital. And our first movie was Batman Begins. Our second movie was Superman Returns. And you know, the idea really, and I, I am embarrassed to share this stage with Nobel Prize winners and folks that are really truly changing the world. I'm like the Batman guy, you know, it's kind of, that's great. It's pretty uh, important too, though. Yeah, well, um, but it was just, uh, you know, we wanted to make sure that we made, on the financial side, make sure that we made uh, responsible decisions. But then on the other side, I make movies I want to see. And, you know, when that stops working, then I'll, I'll try to do something else. But very, very fortunate to do something that I love. There are some people who've written that you guys uh, have a formula, kind of a black box. Um, when you are looking to make a, a movie. Is that true? Is this sort of, you know, just looking at, uh, you know, uh, kind, of a, kind of an algorithm-based system? And isn't that, you know, what's wrong with Hollywood, all the formulas and stuff? I, I, if you find that black box, I would love for you to call Patrick and Ari and let them know and we'll get it in, but I, I haven't seen it. I mean, again, um, we're a very director-driven company. That, that's a very big thing to us. Uh, you know, the directors have had the privilege of working with Chris Nolan now three times, Zack Snyder three times, you know, Brian Singer, Sam Raimi, um, uh, Todd Phillips on comedy who did The Hangover for us. And, you know, these guys and, and these folks that have that vision, our job is to empower that. 
Um, and then, you know, Warner Brothers has their machine uh, on the marketing and distribution side, and um, you know that that's. But there's really no black box. It's because at the end of the day, with all the new innovation and technology and 3D, we're in the storytelling business. And if the story is interesting, and you can capture the imagination of, of uh, the public, and for two hours I can I can go into a, a darkened room and the lights go down, and I get to kind of escape for a while. You know, that's, that's our job. But how do you tell? I mean, you, the hangover, you know, it's just amazing to me. Again, it's like some guy walked in your office and said, you know, I got this idea to make a, a movie about a couple guys who go to Las Vegas and get hammered. Now, you know, I mean, that to me sounds like the most rote, overdone story that, I mean, I couldn't imagine if I was in your position greenlighting something like that because it just sounds like it's just been done a million times. I, I, would, I would agree, but if that person's Todd Phillips who made Old School, Mm -hmm. Then it's kind of like, you know what, Todd? That that's pretty cool. So, you know. uh, there you go. True that. What it, what does it mean when you just said you believe in strong directors? What what does that mean? Um, you know, well, for us, th these folks just have an incredible vision right off the bat. You know, when uh, the first time that um, read the Inception script, and Chris had all the models and everything laid out, and we walked around the room and it was just clear as day that he had this you know this vision and and I think the word genius gets thrown around way too much in our business and in, in Hollywood he I think he has sincerely earned it um, and I think you know the directors that absolutely have a vision and a plan and the confidence to go out on a limb like that and execute it you know that's our job again is, is to empower that and to make sure that we're constantly looking for the next directors and the 300 is a great example. Zack Snyder, who's an amazing filmmaker, had made you know one small horror remake, and when he pitched me the 300, he just he almost stood up and acted it out, and, and was just so um, passionate about it. And I think that's that's one of the keys that um, I'm not sure you can you just kind of have to feel your way through. Right. Obviously, we have an IT crowd here. So when you're talking about something like Inception. What are all the different IT pieces of that, from CGI, production, distribution? Uh, I mean, how, how are you even thinking about that stuff these days, Tom? It, well, it's, you know, you, you, have a, you surround yourself with a great staff who, you know, has expertise in each of these, these areas. And, you know, frankly, making a movie these days, there, there is so much technology, from sound design, from, you know, how the editing is done, to how everything is done, motion capture, there's some unbelievably, uh, you know, just cutting edge uh, pieces that are that are put together in all of these things. And with distribution these days, uh, going digital, um, you know, the innovation going on with 3D, both on the camera side, what James Cameron is doing, and, and um, you know, there, there's a lot. So for the IT crowd, they're, they're, you know, we want you to forget about it once you go in. At least I do. If, if you're sitting around thinking like, wow, they really pulled that shot off, then we, we haven't done our job because, you know, we want you to be completely immersed. But um, it's, it's really pretty staggering when you start with a, a pitch and a stack of papers that's, with a script and you, you sit back at the premiere and say, you know, there it is. It's really special. Do you still focus primarily on theatrical distribution or are you thinking about having your pictures distributed on the web? No, I, I, we're, we're focused on all aspects. And the interesting thing to me about the movie business is if you go back and look at it, you know, putting movies on television 40 years ago was going to kill the business. Then HBO, well, now you can actually say curse words on TV and see the whole, you know, see the whole thing, and that was going to kill the business. VHS, DVD, I mean, the, the tombstone has been written for this business many, many times, and it just has this resiliency um, so we're concerned with making sure that if we make a great movie and then go through uh, however you want to view it, you know, we're concerned with all of it. But I will say that, you know, for me, I also think that theatrical is, um, is still very, very important. I mean, Friday and Saturday nights, it's part of our cultural fabric. And uh, I still, you know, my wife and I still go to the movies all the time. And, you know, I, I don't think that's going any away anytime soon either. So you don't see a point in the near future where you're releasing films online simultaneously or even with a window after theatrical? 
Look, I mean, there's all kinds of things going on in, in terms of uh, looking at the business model and saying, what's the best way to maximize this? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, especially a comedy or a horror movie or something like that, seeing, you know, seeing a comedy with a crowd is different. It just is than, than sitting in your living room. So I can only speak you know, as a fan, and uh, the, the theatrical exhibitors have been very, very good to us. So uh, we'll continue to, to look at all kinds of business models, but that one's still important to us. I read somewhere that you said that you don't like to be associated with movies uh, that wink at the camera. What, is that, what does that mean? Well, it's just, it, again, it's just a personal uh, preference is we, we talk about being all in, you know, on our movies. That if, if we make a movie about Batman, there's a respect as a full-blown comic book geek that there's a reason that people have liked Batman for years. And instead of doing the campy version or the versions like, all right, look, we know we're in tights. We know that we're making a superhero movie. It's, it's taking it very seriously, bringing a great filmmaker in, taking the time to, to have a great script and tell a story and, and not have the escape hatch that, hey, we're really not taking this very seriously. It doesn't mean you don't have light moments and can have fun with it, but you know, these, are, these are subjects and, and uh, properties that we love, and so we, we want to treat them with, a, with the right respect. And we've talked about a lot of hits that you've had, Thomas. You've had some movies that bombed, right, that flopped that didn't do well. Right, you put the glasses back. They weren't critically acclaimed. <laughs> okay, what, what do you learn from the mistakes? Um, I mean, and do they get you down? Does that just bum you out when something just bombs? Well, uh, you know, one of the things that's, uh, that's important to us, a lot of people in the movie business don't care about their brand. We, we actually do. Mm -hmm. um, and if you go to the bingo parlor on Friday nights and wear your Legendary Pictures t-shirt, nobody's going to say anything to you. But if you go to Comic-Con, you get a different reaction. And so it's our job to make sure that every time that logo goes up that we try to do something great. And it doesn't always work that way. And uh, the takeaway, you know, to me is, did you have a clear vision going in? Did you all agree on what the story was going to be? Anytime somebody tells me, don't worry about the script, we'll fix it on the fly, wrong idea. Um, and, and again, I'd keep going back to it. If you stick with top tier directors, um, you know that that has to me more to do with the outcome than than anything else. Um, so you try to learn from each one. But frankly, it is so hard to make a, a movie, any movie, that um, I have a, a greater appreciation. You know, before I was in the movie business, you go, you you pay your ten bucks, and you're like, wow, that that was really. It was really awful. Now sometimes I'll sit back and I'm like, well, they got it made, you know, because it's just, it's so difficult. <laughs> so. Right. Looking forward to Legends of the Guardians. That could be my favorite coming. Facts? No, yeah, uh, yeah never yeah. mind. Um, we're halfway there. <laughs> it's not, not our movie. You haven't seen that that's one? Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Nope. Yeah, all right. That's my company. Um, we're almost out of time here. Um, I, I, I just want to ask you, you know, about your genre, which I guess is kind of action, adventure, comic books, you know, is that really innovation? I mean, is that really something new under the sun? Well, I think it depends on, on how you look at it. Um, you know, we, we certainly don't want to be in the business of just retreading things where you really don't have anything new to say. Um, but, you know, to me, the reason we're incredibly proud of something like Batman is there's been a number of movies done but not with Chris's vision. And it's not to say anything bad against the other ones, we were just really excited about, about his vision. So I think as long as you have something fresh to say and you, know, you, can, um, you can bring that to the screen, then I don't know if it's innovative, but it's a hell of a lot of fun for us. So as long as people keep going and don't throw us out, we'll, we'll keep doing them. Great, well, uh, you've been pretty successful so far, so congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas Tall, please.